Look around you, my young friend. A library is a perfect reflection of the ideal world. Every single volume in my care has its allotted place in the great scheme of things. Move one, even by an infinitesimal degree, and you diminish its value. It is the relationship between facts which gives them their meaning. However well concealed, the truth is always there. To be detected. <laughs> At least, that is my view. And I should like to think that you agree with me, hmm? Mr. Holmes. The Saviour of Cripplegate Square by Bert Cools With Clive Medicine as Sherlock Holmes and Andrew Sachs as Dr. John Watson and featuring Tom Baker as Collington Smith Siobhan Redmond as Mrs. Emily Guttridge David Holt as Tobias Guttridge and Jasmine Hyde as Jenny Snell The Saviour of Cripplegate Square What a filthy night. God only knows what's going on under cover of that. Crime, you mean? Yeah, of course. Oh, oh, damn weather. Not much, I'd wager. How's the old war wound? Oh, making its presence felt. Hmm. <sighs> what do you mean, not much? Well, it's fog. It's the criminal's friend. A night like this, most self-respecting villains are safely tucked up with a drink and a good smoke. Mm, both of which they probably stole from some honest, hard-working citizen. Yes, no doubt. Brandy. Uh, thank you, yes. <laughs> uh, you don't mind? No, no, of course not. Take my mind off my damn shoulder. <laughs> I'll do my best. <sighs> Don't stop. No, not too depressing for a cold winter's night? I wouldn't have called it depressing. Plaintive, yes. Plaintive. Yes, very word. <clears throat> a dying man lies alone, helplessly waiting for the woman he loves. For her sake, he's turned his back on everything. His friends, his country, his hopes for the future. And now... He waits for her, and she does not appear. What's it from? Uh, Kristen and Isolde, a hymn to love and death. Yeah. He had a pretty bleak view of love, your Wagner. Oh, it's a bleak emotion. Oh, come on. Well, the Elizabethans had the right idea. To them. Love was a, a disease. If you caught it, you were doomed. I'll stick to my definition, thank you. Here. <clears throat> Love is a positive force for good. Love brings out the best in man. Well, I think so. Yeah. Oh. You should have met Tobias and Emily Gutteridge. Oh, the devil were they. <clears throat> the Gutteridges of Cripplegate Square. <laughs> yes, they caught the disease. You mean they were in love? It goes somewhat further than that. One of your cases? Just before you and I met. Hmm. Is it um, a good story? Um, come on, Watson. If you want to hear it, say so. Ah, of course I want to hear it. Uh, a dark tale for a dark night. Very well, Doctor. Keep the brandy to hand, light up a cigar, and let me shatter your illusions about love. The Annals of Crime, Police Review 1880, Criminals and Their Characteristics, A Survey of Delinquent Behaviour. Your books, Mr. Holmes. Thank you, Mr. Smith. 
I don't believe I've ever mentioned Collington Smith. Never. Nathaniel Collington Smith. He worked in the library at the British Museum. When I came down from the university, I spent a good deal of time there reading up on various subjects. Like the history of crime? Oh, <clears throat> it's an essential study for a detective. If they'd put in a book collection down to Scotland Yard, their success rate would soar. No, only if you persuaded them to read the books. Oh, Smith could have persuaded them. He had that rare combination. He not only possessed knowledge, he was able to infuse others with the, uh, the thirst for it. If I might make a small comment. Uh, of course. Criminals and their characteristics. It is perhaps a trifle unsound. Uh, you've read it? Oh. <laughs> oh, dear, no. Librarians don't read books, Mr. Holmes. They simply know about them. <laughs> Unsound? Well, that's the general opinion. Sloppily argued from some highly dubious data. Well, then please take it back. Why? Well, I've no wish to clutter my mind with useless information. My dear sir, your mind may not have elastic walls, but it does at least possess both an entrance and an exit. Read the book. Decide for yourself what to retain. One can learn from the unsound as well as the sound, you know. Surely they taught you that up at the university. Uh, Mr. Smith, anyone foolish enough to have voiced that sentiment would have been rapidly removed from the building and confined as a lunatic. Really? <laughs> Fascinating. What a good job I never went there. <laughs> he was a remarkable man. He sounds it. Yes, I learned a good deal in that reading room. And by no means all of it from the books. This is the finest place in the capital to study one's fellow man. In the course of a single morning here, you can observe more characteristics than in a week outside. Only the other day, I noticed that... I heard nothing. I'm sure. Yes, listen. Ah. That's a woman crying. I thought I was right. Probably one of the cleaning staff. I I'm sorry, you were saying? Mr. Holmes, you disappoint me. In what way? I believe it's emanating from that storeroom. Come with me. <laughs> My dear child, what are you doing in here? Sorry, sir, it won't happen again, sir. I I'll get back to work. You'll do nothing of the sort. Sir? Sugar? Sir? Do you take sugar? Oh, no, sir, no, thank you. Very well. Mr. Holmes, kindly pass over that plate of biscuits, will you? Uh, oh, y yes, of course. <coughs> Here. I, I, I should be going. No, I think perhaps you should stay. Very well. Excellent. Now, I am Nathaniel Collington Smith, and this gentleman is Mr. Sherlock Holmes, and you are... Jenny, sir. Jenny Snell. Drink your tea, Miss Snell. I shouldn't be in here. If Miss McCarthy finds out... Oh, you may safely leave Miss McCarthy to me. Drink your tea. Then Mr. Holmes will pour you some more. And you can tell us what's wrong. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. That was typical of the man. She wasn't a servant to him. Just a soul in distress. What was the matter with the girl? Obviously it was nothing trivial. How do you know that? Well, if it were, you'd hardly be telling me about it, would you? When do we get to the gutteridges of Cripplegate Square? Patience, Doctor. Let the tale unfold at its own pace. That's better. Now, Miss Snell, what is it that so upset you? I, uh, can't tell you. Is it something to do with your other job? How did you know about that? I've observed you once or twice arriving here in the evenings as I was leaving. You always come wearing some sort of uniform. Obviously, you have other employment during the day. I'm a nursemaid. Well, not really a nursemaid, just sort of a cleaner, really, huh. like here. During the day, I, I work at Guttridge's private orphanage in Clerkenwell. Uh, have you heard of it? No. Mrs Guttridge, she's the owner. She takes in babies. Orphans, presumably. No, sir, not orphans, though most of them might as well be. Well, then what? Unwanted children, Mr Holmes. Unwanted? Well, for what reason? There are many. Caste space, social stigma, general encumbrance. Good God. 
Something else they didn't teach you up at the university? Hmm? Yes. Anyway, the women bring their babies to Mrs. Guttridge and she takes them in. So she's a, a philanthropist? Sir? I think you'll find that money changes hands. Ah. Baby farming. You're talking about baby farming. The concept was totally new to me, though. It was quite a shock. It's a shocking practice. No, I mean it was a shock realising how little I actually knew of life. A valuable lesson. Yeah, I'm sure it must have been. So, uh, this girl Jenny worked for a baby farmer? Yes. The women pay so much a week, or sometimes they just make one... Donation. Uh, and what happens to the children? Mrs. Guttridge looks after them until they're older. Then she finds people to take them. I see. And something's happened to upset this arrangement? Yes, sir. Something connected with Mrs. Guttridge? No, sir, not her. Oh. It's her husband. Oh, he's a nasty piece of work, sir, though I shouldn't say so. Get out of here, girl. You've no business in here. Uh, please, sir. Mrs. Guttridge sent me to fetch some iodine, sir. Iodine? Yes, sir. Oh, very well. You fetch this yourself, you understand. I was not here. Oh, very good, sir. Thank you, sir. Tell her otherwise, and I'll see you're dismissed. Now go. Where did this conversation take place? I in one of the storerooms, sir, where the medicines and things are kept. Interesting. Go on with your story, Jenny. Surely you're not so upset just because someone told you off. <laughs> if I was, I'd always be crying, sir. <laughs> no, it's more than that. Give us the facts. Well, I'm not sure if I can. Not real facts, like... Without the facts, how can we help you? Well... There's more to life than cold facts, Mr Holmes. Jenny, suppose you tell us this in your own way. Yes, sir. Well, there's something wrong in that house. Something very wrong. If it was just Mrs. Guttridge, everything would be so different. But it's her husband who causes you this alarm. He hates them, sir. The poor little babies, he hates them. For the love of God, can't you shut them up? Some of them are sick, sir. What, again? Mistress says they'll be over it soon. <sighs> Why she has to devote her life to this, I cannot tell. She says they need her, sir. They need her. She was a rare woman. Most of them are only interested in the money. The babies come a very poor second. You speak from experience? Oh, indirectly. These people are supposed to be registered. Local doctors carry out regular checks. Oh, the stories I've heard. Oh, oh. Well, perhaps this one will be different. I hope it is. There. That's good. Oh, that's nice. He'll have nothing to moan about now, will he? The old misery. Feeling better now, are you? Are you? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, please, no. <laughs> How many of them were dead? Three. There were three who'd been sick. And, sir... This was the day after I saw Mr. Guttridge messing about with the medicines. Mm. The very next day. Ah. As God's in his heaven, sirs, I... I think he killed them. It wouldn't be the first time, I'm afraid. Did the Guttridges have the babies insured? As usual, you cut straight to the heart of the matter. Yes, they did. Ah, oh, was there a doctor's report? Mrs. Guttridge did everything by the letter of the law. The doctor was sent for straight away. And? No obvious cause of death. Hmm. It may not have been the most rigorous examination. Those East End practices are desperately overworked. Some of the doctors there are not above taking money to turn a blind eye. That is a disgusting suggestion. Which you know full well to be true. Every barrel has its rotten apples, Watson. They will always be so. Oh, yes, I'm afraid you're right. I take it you investigated this Guttridge man, then? Was it your first murder case? Actually, I was reluctant to get involved. You must go to the police. The police? I can't. Don't you know what happens to servants who criticise their masters, sir? I'll be out on my ear in no character. Then what would happen to me? You have your job here. 
four hours' work at five pence a night. Could you live on that? No, he couldn't. I understand your problem, my dear. There's something else, sir. Something I haven't said. And what is that? She's afraid that Gutteridge knows of her suspicion. That's it, sir. He knows I saw him doing it, whatever it was, with the medicines. When was this? Uh, five days ago. Have you been into work there since? Every day. I'd get the elbow otherwise. You are a very brave young woman. Brave? Not me, sir. I've been terrified, I can tell you straight. Has Mr Gutteridge said anything to you or done anything suspicious? No, but I've kept away from him best I could. Very sensible of you. <clears throat> My young friend here will look into the matter. Oh, sir. Smith? I'm ever so grateful, sir. I had to tell someone. I'm glad it was you. Another fine night. Why did you say that to the girl? Well, my dear Mr. Holmes, surely you found her story interesting. Well, of course. The girl is observant, intelligent. Their suspicions are probably correct. And she appears to have great faith in your ability to help her, which I share. Oh, thank you. The fact remains, I don't see what on earth I can do. You can stir yourself out from behind your books and look into the real world for a change. What sort of a detective turns his back on a possible murder case? I can hardly march up to this woman's establishment and tell her I'm investigating three suspicious deaths. Of course you can't. But there are other ways. Put that brain of yours to use. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Good evening, sir. What's your pleasure? Uh, whiskey, please. And one for yourself. Oh, thank you, sir. Pleasure to encounter a real gent for a change. Oh. There. Best in the house. Thank you. Now, sir, what tickles your fancy? Big, skinny, right for the plucking? What are you after? What I'm after is information. What sort of information? Do you know a man called Gutteridge? It was a mistake, of course. She shut her mouth and didn't open it again. Oh, they're very suspicious of strangers in those parts, mm. especially ones from up west. Mm, so I discovered <laughs> it was a stupid miscalculation. <laughs> Don't berate yourself. The basic idea was perfectly sound. If you want the local gossip, go to the local pub. Mm. Just don't go dressed for the opera. <laughs> <laughs> well, I trust you didn't give up the quest quite that easily. No, of course not. I waited until it was full dark and went round to the house itself. The area wasn't pleasant. Guttridge's private orphanage was a rambling old building set back from the street. It must have been quite a place in its day. Didn't you feel even more conspicuous there than in the pub? Oddly enough, no, I didn't. Evening wear is ideally suited to hiding in undergrowth. Every burglar should invest in a set of tails. Easy now. Easy. She'll be safe and well cared for. And you can come and visit her whenever you want. I've told you that. I don't think I could bear it. I really don't. I understand. But if you change your mind, there's always a welcome for you here. You were so kind. Without you, I... I'd have had to... No. <laughs> there's no sense dwelling on might have been. Will it be all right going home? <laughs> it's not far. I I'll be quite safe. Oh. <laughs> there, there, child. It's mended. Everything's all right now. It was immensely frustrating. I could see in the front door, but I couldn't learn anything of use. There was no sign of Mr. Gutteridge at all. If I'm going to see this thing through, I need to get inside. And how exactly do you propose to do that? I don't know yet. If I might make a small suggestion? Well, please do. This could be an ideal opportunity to put some of that expensive university experience to good use. Applied chemistry? That wasn't what I had in mind, no. Try to think in something other than straight lines. So that's where you got it from? Watson, you're interrupting my flow. Got what from? That infuriating expression. How many times have you told me to stop thinking in straight lines? Very good advice. Well, did it work? Actually, yes, it did. Oh! oh well, shit! I'm sorry, mate. Miles away. Yeah, the best place for you. All right, all right. Keep your shirt on. 
Some people, right? Are you really saying... What? That was, no, 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 sorry, but this is fascinating. You're saying that was the very first time you ever used a disguise? Exactly so, thinking sideways, you see. What did I do at university apart from study? I acted. You've never told me that. You never asked me. May I continue? You know, no more interruptions, I promise. What did you find when you got to the orphanage? What I expected to find. My primary suspect. Yes? I want to see Mrs Gutteridge. What makes you think she's here? Oh, look, mate, don't mess me about. This is Gutteridge's private orphanage, right? Where else is she going to be? Who are you? I'm, I'm someone who wants to see the proprietor. Look, please, please. Who is it, Toby? There's someone for you. Then why didn't you send Jenny to find me? Good afternoon. Mrs Gutteridge, I was told... <laughs> yeah, look... Yeah. It's a chilly day. We'll be more comfortable inside. Now, Mr... Hawkins, ma'am. Albert Hawkins. Now, Mr Hawkins, you drink your tea and I'll tell you why you've come to me. Ma? There. Oh, uh, thanks. What do you mean, ma'am? You'll tell me. My dear Mr Hawkins, people only come here for one reason. The details vary, but the basic facts are always the same. Now, let me see. You're in work, yes? Yes, uh, as market supervisor. Decent enough pay, but not enough to feed one more mouth. Am I right? Oh, we've, we've got five already. Look, uh, no offence and all, but if there was any other way, I wouldn't be here. You're not alone, Mr Hawkins. Oh, no, you're definitely not alone. At least you didn't do something drastic. I'd have nothing to do with that. No more would my else. I've seen what those butchers do. And so have I. I'm sorry to say, we shan't mention it again. Oh. Does your wife know you're here? Oh, yes. Good. Well, we do have space at the moment. Would you like to see round the house? Well, I wouldn't mind. I put my mind at rest, like. Of course. Drink up your tea and I'll give you a tour. You've made a good choice, Mr Hawkins. I never take in more babies than I can cope with, unlike some, I'm sorry to say. Oh, we have heard stories, my else and me. And some of them are undoubtedly true, I'm afraid. Uh, what happens if they get sick? I can care for most common illnesses myself, and of course we're registered with a local doctor. Oh, good, that's, that's good. Um, and they do look all right, like... Uh, look at them, sleeping so peaceful. Happy, isn't it? So, I suppose all I, all I need to know now... Well, um... I think there's still some cherry cake downstairs. We can discuss the practicalities over some more tea. Come along. The practicalities turned out to be threepence a day or a single payment of five pounds. Good Lord. Yes, it was certainly more than the going rate I checked, but it was a superior establishment. How many working-class women could afford five pounds? Well, when you consider the alternatives... I'm afraid the alternatives are the only way for most people in that position. Something's going to have to be done, you know, sooner or later. I agree, but we're straying somewhat from the story. Oh, yes, sorry, sorry. Uh, did you manage to see that medicine storeroom? Uh, it would have been too out of character, I'm afraid. But I did at least succeed in getting another look at the alleged child killer. He was summoned to show me out. Your wife's a wonderful woman, Mr Gutridge. So I'm constantly being told. Oh, you must be proud of her. There are perhaps nobler ways to make a living. Oh, I can't think of any. She's a real godsend, she is. Do you say so? I do, sir. God bless her, and you too. Good day to you, Mr Hawkins. Good day. There's a definite undercurrent of... Oh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Hate, possibly? Weariness, distaste? But I'm not prepared to brand him as a murderer on the strength of it. I'm pleased to hear it. I have to know what's in that medicine store. And how do you propose to find out? Well, I've thought of two separate ways. Uh, neither of them is ideal. One is positively illegal. And the other? No! I can't! Jenny! I suppose it captures me. I'll make sure he's out of the way. But I wouldn't know what to look for. I'll give you a list. A list? Oh, sir. What good's a list to me? You can't read. Nor write. No, sir, I can't. 
thank God for it. Holmes, what the devil were you thinking of? Collington Smith used exactly those words. Good for him. To put that child into danger... I had a perfectly foolproof diversion worked out. Did you? As I said, it was a long time ago. I wouldn't do it now. Unless there was no other way. The point is academic. I had to fall back on my second plan of attack. The illegal one. Quite. I know exactly what it was. Of course you do. Mr. Holmes, I cannot condone such blatant criminal activity. Unless, of course, it yielded the desired result. Arsenic. He's been concentrating pure arsenic and storing it in unmarked bottles in a locked cupboard. Then young Miss Snell was quite correct. It looks like it. What will you do now? uh, There's one more piece of evidence I need. And then? Then my case will be complete. A detective? Do you mean from Scotland Yard? A private detective. Are you sick? Injured? No. Sir, I have a room full of patients out there and a hundred more waiting to take their place. I don't mean to be rude, but I have no time to play games. This is no game. You are the official medical examiner for Guttridge's orphanage, are you not? What about it? I have been commissioned to investigate the recent deaths of three infants. Mr... Holmes. Sherlock Holmes. Mr. Holmes, when you leave my rooms, look around you. Look at the filth and the squalor and the hunger and ask yourself which is the stranger, that children die or that they manage to live. Have you seen inside Mrs. Guttridge's establishment? Have you met the lady herself? Yes, I have. Then you'll know that the children there live like royalty compared to most. I've seen Mrs. Guttridge take in babies who are more bone than flesh. If some of them don't survive, then look outside that house for the cause, sir, not inside it. Now, if you don't mind, I have to do my best to help these people. Will you answer just two questions? If you will agree to ask them and then leave. I agree. Then ask me your questions. Did you conduct a thorough examination of the dead babies? As thorough as my time and my resources permitted, yes, I did. And did you detect any signs at all of arsenical poisoning? (laughs) Arsenic? Good God, no. Not a trace. You believed him. I was impressed with him. I've said to you before now that when a doctor goes wrong, he makes a formidable criminal. Yes, you have. I can't say I was flattered. I think perhaps this will redress the balance. In all my life, I've not met many people who are thoroughly decent, uncomplicated, good men. And of the ones I have met, several of them were doctors. You appear to have arrived at something of an impasse, my friend. Well, why else is arsenic there, if not to kill all those children? Rats. Well, you can buy poison for vermin over the counter at any chemist shop. If I read the evidence aright, that arsenic was being produced in secret, then hidden away. Then what do you propose to do now? Well, I suppose it could be nothing more than a coincidence. I have to talk to that girl again. Jenny. Oh. oh. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to start. Oh, it's not you, sir, it's me. I'm just frightened at any little noise now. You're not going to ask me to spy on him again, are no, you? No, 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 no. And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about asking you before. It was wrong. Please forgive me. Forgive you? Forgive? <gasps> My dear Miss Snell, I, um, please stop crying. Sorry, sir. I, I'm really... What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. It's just, well... People like me don't get apologised to, that's all. Oh. Then you do forgive me? Oh, of course I do, sir. He was only trying to help me after all. Thank you. So, what do you want this time? I want to ask you this. When you surprise Mr Guttridge with the medicines, can you remember what he was doing? Exactly what he was doing? Well... They might help if you tell me what he was working with. Do you remember? 
I, I'm not sure. Well, I could recall the scene. Mrs. Gutteridge asked you to get some iodine. That's right. So you had to stop what you were doing. What was that? I was washing the sheets. I just put the clean ones on the beds and I was washing the old very ones. Very good, very good. So you had to stop washing the sheets and you went to the medicine store. Was the door open or shut? Shut. It was shut. Excellent, excellent. You pushed open the door and you saw Mr. Gutteridge. Was he facing you? No. He had his back to the door. That's right, he was bending over the table. He turned round and he had... Fly papers. He was holding fly papers. Fly papers? Made by impregnating a strip of paper with a weak solution of... of arsenic. Yeah. Soak the paper in water, boil the solution dry, and what's left is pure concentrated poison. Pretty damning. Conclusive. There you are. Oh, not too fast now. Good. When you've finished here, Jenny, collect up the bottles and leave them to soak. Yes, Mum. I'll be in the scullery if you need me. Mum. Oh, yes, you like that, don't you? Of course you do. That's the way. You, girl. Oh, sir. Stop that and come with me. I want to talk to you. Get in. Get in there. No! No! Quiet, girl. Go in, I say. Listen to me. I want to know exactly what you saw in here the other day. You understand? Exactly. I'm afraid I have some disturbing news. Oh? What news? I've been speaking to the cleaning supervisor. Jenny Snell hasn't come into work for the past four nights. Oh, God. Yeah, it didn't look good. What did you do? Uh, I trusted that my disguise really had taken them in and went round to Guttridge's orphanage as myself. Quite a risk. It had to be done. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm here to inquire about Miss Jennifer Snell. Then you'd better come in. What happened? I was presented with this. Here. But surely... Exactly. A fatal error. But what did it mean? Had he killed her, too? The girl had been silenced. I'm afraid I could see no other explanation. What did you do? To be honest, I wasn't sure what to do. I want to ask your advice. My advice? My dear sir, I'm just a tired old librarian too rapidly approaching an unwilling retirement. What could you possibly wish to ask me? If I should go to the police with what I know, or confront the murderer myself. What was Smith's advice? To do neither. Neither? Why on earth not? For a very good reason, which I'd completely overlooked. You're too eager to show off your cleverness. A calculating criminal has made a slip, and Sherlock Holmes has detected it, am I correct? Uh, well, yes, I suppose you are, but... But if I'm, if I'm right, and the girl has been done away with... Then justice must be done, of course. But it seems to me, Mr. Holmes, that you're proposing to confront your villain with only half a case. You may have solved this new crime, but what of the old one? The dead babies. He was quite right, of course. I had nothing to link the three dead infants with the secret store of arsenic. No evidence whatsoever of foul play. What did you do? Something you've seen me do many times. I just sat and smoked and thought, and eventually I saw the truth. And then I knew exactly what course I should take. Mr. Holmes, I fail to see how I can help you further. I've given you Jenny's home address. I suggest you contact her at her father's. I doubt if I should find her there. What do you mean by that? But I'm not here solely about Miss Snell. I'm investigating the recent deaths of three babies in your care, Mrs. Guttridge. Those children died of natural causes, God rest their souls. I have the doctor's certificates. I'm well aware of that. Then what is there to investigate? A very great deal. For instance, I know that your medicine store contains a hidden supply of concentrated arsenic. What? And I know that the arsenic was used to kill those infants. But there was no trace of poison. You know that. Oh, yes. And finally, I know that Jenny Snell was unfortunate enough to stumble onto what was happening and was killed. 
to keep her silent. Jenny's dead? Unfortunately for her killer, she came to me first. She can't be dead. It's a lie. Toby, tell him. I already have. She had to leave unexpected. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, my mum died sudden. I have to go home. There you are. Actually, it's, it's quite well done, except for one rather significant detail. What are you on about? Next time you forge a farewell letter, Gutteridge, I suggest you first make sure that your victim knows how to write. Tobias, tell me this isn't true. What did you do with the body, Gutteridge? There's new returned earth in the back garden. Shall we go and dig it up? Oh, dear God. I have you, Gutteridge. There's no sense in denying it. I'm not going to deny it. Oh, dear God. Oh, dear Lord. How could you do it? Why? Well, will you tell her or shall I? I had to shut her up. She knew I killed those babies. Toby! Don't say nothing, Emily. You admit it. You killed Jennifer Snell. I said so, And yes. the three children. Yes. Oh, Toby. How? What do you mean, how? Oh, it was brilliantly done. Not a trace of poison in their system. Tell me how you did it. Well, very well, then. Tell me why. Perhaps it was for the insurance money. Yes. Yes, that's it. The insurance. The insurance money goes to your wife. I checked. I ask you again. Just how were the murders done? You don't know. Of course you don't know, because you were not the killer. I tell you, you I was... You found the evidence. You knew there had been foul play, even though you didn't know the method. And since then, you've done everything in your power to protect the real murderer. To protect your wife. Only she handles the children. Only she supervises their food and their medicine. And only she stands to benefit from their death. No! I've had enough of this. Please remain exactly where you are. Thank you. Ah, since one of you can't explain and the other won't, permit me. It's been done on adults before now, but never on children. So I congratulate you on a totally original crime. You start with the smallest of amounts, almost infinitesimal, I suppose, on an infant. Then you build up the dose, a fraction of a grain by a fraction of a grain, day by day, until you have a child hopelessly addicted to arsenic. Keep administering the drug, and the child lives. Withhold it, and the result is death, and not a trace of anything harmful to be detected. Clever and diabolical. You've got no proof. I have abundant proof. It's here, in this house. You'll find no arsenic here. Of course I won't. You destroyed it all, just as you destroyed that innocent young girl, and for the same reason, a perverted desire to protect your wife. Toby, my dear... Don't say anything, Emily. You're right. He's got no proof. Tell him, Mrs. Guttridge. What? Tell me what? Tell him the rest. Tell him that three wasn't going to be enough. What? Tell him that every single one of the babies in this house is already a drug addict, waiting to be casually snuffed out the next time you felt the whim or the need for power or some ready cash. Tell him. You are so wrong. I don't think so. A whim. Power. Money. That's not why I do it. Emily. Do you know what my babies have to look forward to, Mr. Holmes? Do you know about the factories and the workhouses and the filth and the squalor? Have you seen the children begging and stealing? Have you seen them selling their bodies on the streets for a penny a time? I've seen them. Well, before it comes to that, for a time, for a tiny, fleeting time, I can give them warmth and comfort and love. And then 
Then I can make sure the world doesn't get them and soil them and wear them down and finally destroy them like animals. And don't you tell me that what I do is wrong. It's the world that's wrong, sir. Forget about me. I don't matter. Do something about the world out there, if you can. What are you going to do with us? Take you to the police. And then it'll be the courts, and then the hangman. I imagine so. Then tell me this, Mr Holmes. What will happen to my babies now? You tell me that. I didn't know what to say. I have one question. What is it? The evidence of the other children. Were you sure? Or was it just bluff on your part? It wasn't a bluff. One of the side effects of progressive arsenic addiction is unnatural lethargy and calm, especially in the young. I'd seen the signs when she showed me around the house on my first visit. I just didn't recognise them for what they were until later. So? All the children are due for the same fate. Dear God. The doctor thinks they can be slowly weaned off the stuff. They might live. If you can call the world that's waiting for them a life. Oh, come now, Mr. Holmes. Whatever our experiences may suggest, I like to think that the world is basically a good place. There's still tolerance and warmth and humanity out there. Don't you believe that? I'd very much like to meet that man. I'm afraid that's not possible. He died last year. Oh. I'm, um, I'm sorry. Thank you. Why didn't the doctor recognise the symptoms in the other children? Uh, I dare say I was a lot more familiar with the signs of poisoning than he was. Besides, he had no reason to look for them. He saw clean sheets and good care and was grateful for it. Hmm. So, that was your story about love? It was. Gutteridge loved his wife, murderer or no. He loved her so much that he was willing to take her guilt on himself and to kill to protect her. And she loved the children. And so she murdered them. You still insist that love is a positive force for good? Yes, of course I do. You can't argue from the particular to the general like that. It's, um, it's thinking in straight lines. Touché, Doctor. A palpable hit. Mm. Oh, uh, what a sordid business. Poor Jenny Snell. The wrong place at the wrong time. She must have walked in on Gutteridge at the very moment he discovered the arsenic. How can a young girl's life hang on such a slender thread? Yes, how indeed. <sighs> How's well, Smith right, do you think? Is the world basically a good place? I believe so. Don't you... I wish I could, my friend. I wish I could. Uh, I think the rain stopped. Yes, it has. In The Saviour of Cripplegate Square, Sherlock Holmes was played by Clive Medicine and Dr. John Watson by Andrew Sachs. Collington Smith was played by Tom Baker. Emily Guttridge by Siobhan Redmond. Tobias Guttridge by David Holt. And Jenny Snell by Jasmine Hyde. The Doctor was played by Andrew Wincott and the Landlady by Helen Ayres. The violinists were Leonard Friedman and Bernard Doherty. The Saviour of Cripplegate Square was written by Bert Coules from a reference in the novel The Sign of the Four by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. The director was Patrick Rayner.